Hello everybody, it's City Mad Haven here today, and we're going to be taking a look at the Object 260, a Russian Tier 10 that you need free experience to get your hands on. Honestly, the Object 260, I have been playing this tank for a very long time, as you guys can see by the two marks that are on it. Um, back before they updated the Object 260, it just it didn't seem like it was a really high top performing tank with the uh, 30 millimeters of armor on top. So the entire roof of the tank was only 30 millimeters, but with one of the most recent updates and recent buffs to the tank, not to mention all the buffs they've done in the past to the tank to counteract it not having very good survivability as a heavy tank, they decided to bump the health up from 21 to 2300 and to increase the top armor from 30 millimeters to 55. So, Object 260, this is one of those tanks that, well... They kind of overdid the top armor a little bit, which made it really strong inside the queues. And uh, you guys are going to have a little bit of a blast checking out both these matches. Just as much as I had playing them. I mean, sure, you know, it's like we're not here to show out the best matches that we can have. I'm here to show you guys the gameplay we can have inside of a tank and ways to play it. If you guys are looking to get your hands on the 260, in my opinion, this is one of the better performing tier 10s in the game overall for public matchmaking. Not for comp. Well, maybe comp. Comp just think can perform really good. But first things first, let's go ahead and dive right into stuff as I'm getting used to my stream deck still apparently on clicking all the wrong buttons, trying to grab the keyboard and completely forgetting that I removed my uh, quick link to swap everything around and uh, yeah let's just jump into this now as i move the mic with me slowly over to the side all right starting out the object 260 it is a 260 so when i give it 260 millimeters of apcr pin um along with the apcr the rounds do travel at a velocity of 1259 meters a second heat rounds with 340 pin they also travel at 800 no 900 high explosives is 68 travel at 700 meters per second along with that your gun it's a standard 120 we have a 440 on both uh, standard and premium 530 on the high explosives if you can't get those he's around he rounds to pin they are devastating and 68 68 millimeters of pin is not bad a lot of armor in the game on the rear you're not gonna be looking at 68 unless they're german or yeah i think germans would be the only one that has more than 68 millimeters on the rear depending on the uh, tank but yeah, you know, the brain, it's just smooth today. Let's just move on. Okay, up next, max speed, 60. 60. It's a heavy um. It, this thing is fast. Along with that, it's got armor to boot. View range of 400 meters as well. Still concealment, just non-existent. Don't even try to keep this thing concealed. It is it just, no, it, it's not. It, you will never keep this thing hidden at all. But trade-off is... You get haul down, your turret's amazing. Up next, go ahead and take a look at the gun here, overall stats. We have 5.36 rounds per minute. And penetration reload time, base reload is 11.2 seconds. Aim time is 2.2. Um, I did learn something new about aim time. So the aim time for 2.2 seconds is how long it takes to zoom in 60% of the way. That last 40% is kind of just like it's focusing in but I found out that aim time is 60% of your bloom should close within that amount of time that is uh, labeled on the tank. Up next, we have 40 round capacity, which, you know, you can take a healthy amount of whatever rounds you really want to take. This thing is not going to be struggling with that with the 440 alpha. Accuracy at 0.35, that is fantastic. Six degrees of gun depression. It, it's not enough to work a ridge line, but it's enough to per se get the job done if you need to if you're stuck working a ridge line inside this tank you're playing it wrong or you're helping out a couple of guys be a little bit of aggressive and trying to hit a different flank and doing something the tank's not supposed to so if you got to try and reverse up the back of a hill to get an incline that way you can get the gun depression down or rely on elevation since your top armor is over 55 millimeters so nothing can overmatch this unless it's a death star or bigger Yes, and elevation is 15 degrees, so really its gun is limited, but not too bad. Turret armor, 
350, 240 on the sides, and 100 on the rear. Your turret traverse speed is 26 degrees. Engine horsepower is 1,200, so 1,200 horsepower, giving this tank a 19.58 horsepower to horsepower ratio. This thing is just quick. You think the IS-7 with his most recent buff is fast? This thing outruns it tenfold. Along with that, 60 top speed, 15 in reverse. Reverse speed's not too bad, being a 15. Uh, fire chance at 15% as well. I have been set on fire one time this week during the silver bonus. And actually, how many matches have I invested in this? I've been set on fire one time in this tank. As I'm having a brain fart trying to find myself again. So I'm going to take a look at the last 30 day statistics for the tank. And Watch Stars is starting to get a lot of ads. Uh, we put in 37 matches in, in the course of that time with a 72.97 win rate. Damage standing is pretty high, 4,700. But yeah, I'd say out of the 37 matches I've played, I've been set on fire only one time that entire time. Honestly, fire extinguishers, you probably not going to need them uh, maybe the transmission is in the front though so you can get your engine damaged if they are shooting you in the front so keep that in mind whenever you are playing this tank you might be using your repair kit quite often if they're hitting your lower plate so try and keep that covered as much as you can um, up next terrain ground resistance with 1.3 1.7 and 2.5 so that is hard medium and soft um I would probably recommend taking off-road driving on this tank just to try and lower those down a tad bit because 1.7 on medium, that is a big hindrance. So taking off-road driving would be a really good choice. Signal range of 720, that's primarily helping with assist damage if you're up in the front row spotting out targets. So whoever's behind you, if they're within your radio range, you can get at that assist. Um, Jumping over to the armor here. Yeah, you see a lot of red go away. A lot of red. A little bit of green down at the bottom. So this is 260 base penetration starting off. And that's actually not the advantage of this tank. The advantage of this tank is reverse side scraping. If you can get this thing reverse side scraping almost anywhere, it is, in my opinion, one of the best reverse side scraping tanks in the game. Because it's, it's taller than a lot of the other tanks inside the queues. So primarily their gun might be right where your hull is. For how tall you are which means that they're not going to be able to hit your top armor if they're aiming for it because they're going to be looking at it from this point of view instead and sure your rear is a little bit exposed near the back so just all you got to do is lower your gun a tad bit and once you lower it it's just going to get absorbed by the barrel and i've i've done this quite a bit both replays coming up we're going to be showing off um the advantages to the turret the speed of it haul down capabilities and just a lot that it can do and why is it showing the same one go away stop it i need to get an ad blocker I'm such a slacker it's totally fine but armor wise you're looking at about 100 millimeters on the side you got 30 millimeters of spaced armor at a heavy angle so and 30 millimeters of spaced armor 100 top plate 150 lower plate 150 side of the turret between 210 to 185 to 170 in some spots but yeah dude it's it's the 260 i just i don't know what it is about this tank i love it but i've been struggling to perform inside of it the past couple of days and it, it's gonna take a minute to really get back into the groove i guess you can say for the tank because it's been quite some time since i've played it and honestly 260 just it's it's been in the game for a while and con wise there's not a whole lot of cons to the tank except for maybe how tall it is now with the accuracy the way that it's put together it's not too bad in at in, at all it's not bad at all 0.35 and then we have all the accuracy perks that we can apply to lower it down to you know, whatever you want to try and get it down to. Taking a premium consumable, boosting that view range. We'll look at my equipment after this match and go over why I'm using them and, you know, why you guys should also use them, depending on your playstyle, because everyone is different. Now, I, I do not use a gun rammer on my Object 260. The reason why? My base reload is 9.66 seconds, and with a premium consumable on top of it, we've got it down to 9.1. So... 
in my opinion, I do not feel you need to take a gun rammer on this tank. I would rather use a power terrain to increase my average speed, allowing me to get into those more aggressive positions and just utilize the top speed that the Object 260 has. You know, you can find yourself in really bad situations too, even with buffing up that uh, top speed. Just because of how tall the tank is. This is not no slouch of a tank. It's not a low profile tank at all. This is a very high profile tank. Super tall. And I guess you could say one of the biggest disadvantages of that is that there's going to be a lot of maps that there's crossfire locations that you can pull up into. But you're exposing the side of your turret to them. Sure, you have really thick turret armor, but if they're loading the heat, it's not really going to matter if your turret's, you know, thick enough or not. Even with that 350 millimeters of frontal armor, 210 in some places on the side of the turret with 185 as well. If they're loading the heat rounds, more than likely they are going to go through because it's going to be flat to them. Now, the entire top of this tank over on PC is only 50 millimeters console. Um, I do want to say console kind of stepped up a little bit too much bumping it up to 55 because that prevents 152 and 155 caliber guns to be able to go through this armor when in fact 152s and 155s should be able to penetrate it so whenever you're reverse side scraping you're reverse side scraping on the left side of the tank where you have no hatch you technically do not have a weak spot anywhere on the tank and the only way to kill you is with high explosives but with a lot of the rebalancing going into the game, they've been buffing a lot of tanks with HE shells and they're making it very difficult to side scrape right now because of how much they've been buffing high explosive rounds. Uh, for instance, Type 5 and Strum Tiger, those are two very scary tanks on the field right now that are able to do so much with just high explosives. Being guaranteed 600 to 450 damage every single 14 seconds with the Type 5 with its 15 centimeter, 150 millimeter, and just guarantee that damage with uh, 1300 alpha. And if you do penetrate, oh, it's bad. It's scary. Scary bad. But as you guys probably just noticed, we actually did bounce a 268 version 5 off the top of the tank as well. So yeah, with what they did, you're able to block in. It's just, you get this thing hauled down, and there's nothing that can really overmatch it. The only way to take it out is with high explosives. Now, I chose this replay because we're showing off how well you can use the turret and also, you know, you don't want to overexpose too much. So using the ridge line, using your cursor to kind of tell you where you are, that way you're not overexposing too much. You're not popping out your top armor or your pike because it does have a pike. If you guys are trying to side scrape in this, you need to reverse side scrape and artillery for 940 damage and then an HE shell coming in from the uh, defender as well bouncing a premium from the 268 no not 268 the brain fart the vk honestly the vk 7201 k that is a really fun tank and i enjoy the crap out of it sadly it has a very very exposed weak spot on its um turret which is basically the entire turret i always tell everyone to shoot it in the face you'll go right through it because it's true it'll just rip right through it like it's paper and artillery again and another high explosive shell from the defender just trading off the he shells but so far just from four high explosive shells i've taken 2000 damage now with the past two weeks for anyone who was uh, playing during the time that these matches were recorded and you've been seeing a lot of people playing for the silver bonus inside tier 10 Artillery was the most profitable during that time and it's just I, I'm patiently waiting for them to debuff artillery because of how hard artillery can hit you. They hit you for an outrageous amount every single time and I'm just waiting for them to fix it because it's just a little broken. Gotta voice my opinion on that because it's the honest truth. A little bit broken. Being able to sit in the back of the map, shoot across the map, hit somebody for a thousand damage, and oh, look at that. I dreaded that moment. I sat there and I was like, oh! Yeah. And then even his uh, clan tag was four arty. Skipping straight away, because that match kind of took quite some time to actually go over. 
it took him a little bit longer to complete it, but it was a good game nonetheless. But let's go ahead, jump right into the equipment here. So we're using optics, power terrain, ventilation, and the fourth equipment slot that technically doesn't even exist. I just pretend like it's not even there because it's supposed to be a base in-game mechanic and it's a piece of equipment now. So my crew, let's go ahead and jump over. This is pretty much my standard basic Russian crew that hasn't changed in a long time, but I will be making a change to it coming up pretty soon. So we're running Born Leader, Rapid Loading, Run and Gun, Steady Aim, Snapshot, Situational Awareness, Sixth Sense, Track Mechanic, Clutch Braking. Um, the next time I do respec this crew, I will more than likely be removing Run and Gun and putting on Last Stand. So if you guys do want to copy my perk setup, keep in mind Run and Gun will be getting replaced with Last Stand. Because Last Stand is just, it's one of those perks that once it's engaged, it can make the biggest difference in a 1v1 scenario and even make you come out on top of that scenario. But that's the equipment setup, the ammunition loadout. You guys can load it out however you really want to, however you feel like you need to load it out for yourself. Everyone has a different way of playing. But for me, I usually take my average rounds that I can get off inside of a tank, or at least what could be considered average, which, you know, 15 standard shells, there's moments I'll actually fire all of them, and then I'm left with nothing but premium afterwards. And honestly, whenever you end up against a lot of targets with spaced armor, that is not ideal, but it does happen. Uh, next match is going to be up on Highway, and as I said before, just... Being able to see the overall advantage of speed inside the 260, it's just outrageous how quick this tank can be. So I've, I've said a lot of things that I like about the 260, probably because I really do like the Object 260. Um, some of the downsides to it is it is too fast. And there's moments that you're going to be the first in there, but if you're not you know, planning ahead of time, depending on the map that you're on, Sure, you're going to be first in, but there's also a chance you're going to be first out as well. So you do want to be careful with how much you're going to be rushing in and kind of situate. And if, you, if you're playing inside of a platoon, always coordinate with your platoon mates on where you need to go. Um, learn to utilize your speed, kind of push up, find a position that you can lock down early game. Or maybe even mid game or come up with like a plan saying like after we clear out this spot, we're going to head over here. So that way you know exactly where you're going immediately after if, you know, your match is going good enough for you to be able to do that. It's not like it always does, but it's a possibility. Now, the 260 with, I would say, a couple of the most recent updates to the tank. This tank is probably one of those tanks that has been buffed a little bit too much. So... The hit point buff that they did about a year ago, maybe even a year and a half ago, I can't remember the exact date on when they did the hit point buff, bumping it from 2100 to 2300, and then buffing the top armor of the tank. They have made this thing very, very aggressive with what they've done to it. And, I mean, Wargaming by this point is getting very well known for over-buffing tanks quite a bit. Now, whenever you're reverse side scraping, keep in mind it is reverse side scraping. So your controls are inverted once you do this. So for anyone that's newer to reverse side scraping, this will take a little bit of getting used to if you're not used to reverse side scraping. Just think that it's inverted. That's the best way to do it. And here, you know, we have a mouse and a type 5, a couple of really big juicy targets, a lot of hit points coming at us. But what this replay is going to be showing off is just how strong this thing can be reverse side scraping in some positions. So, already up to 885 damage, 980 blocked as it just barely started to go up. And taking the time here, want to focus out type 5, get a shell in the hem. There we go. That's a good play right there. So, even the back cheek on the rear of the armor, if they are not loading heat rounds, they will not be able to go through that because it's considered an auto ricochet and spaced armor. But if they are loading heat rounds, they are able to pin that spot because the spaced armor is not super thick. It is thin. Once you load the heat rounds, it's comparable to about 120 millimeters of armor. And right there, bouncing around from the Type 5. Now we're bouncing. So yeah, we're up to 2300 dealt, 3000 ricocheted. And here, here's a tip I can give you guys. Take your gun. Whenever you get the chance and you're brawling with somebody, 
Now, all you gotta do is just stick it in their barrel. We just blocked the shell from hitting our teammate by just putting our barrel inside of his barrel. Um, I do know that a lot of people know about that, but for those who don't know about it, you do now. And right here, I kind of made a misplay because I was trying to get positioned a little bit better and he was able to get a shot off. But we did take him down for his last remaining 15 hit points. And now we got to try and you know, get our tank a little bit unstuck right here. And taking two shots, putting one into the uh, T95. But overall, Object 260, if you guys are looking to you know spend some free XP on a tank, this would be one that I would recommend. Just because it's, it's versatile. It's not versatile in all maps because of its height. But whenever it comes in the armor and speed, this thing does extremely well. You know, being taken down by a machine, that, that kind of sucks. But 4,415 dealt along with 3640 blocked. You know, not a bad match. Really good lineup for that tank. Now, Object 260, you know, it, it's not going to be the win-all tank. Yeah, there is no tank in game that is win-all, period. Because if you had a win-all tank, you'd have to take the 260, you would have to give it light tank consume it with light tank benefits and everything else. So, primarily, 260, it's a solid choice if you guys are looking to spend a little bit of free XP to get your hands on your first tier 10 premium or even your last tier 10 premium or you're waiting for someone like me to put out a video on it saying, hey, it's not that bad of a tank. It really isn't. Your standard rounds are APCR. Your premium rounds are heat rounds. It's probably one of the most ideal loadouts that you can get on a tank because whenever you think about it, APCR travels fast. It can still overmatch because it can readjust by two degrees on impact. Heat rounds, they don't overmatch, but whenever they hit the armor, they just try to go through it at that thickness. And then high explosives, they're, they're HE. They just hurt when they're sent out to you in large amounts of just pure whatever brain fartery and just murder type 5 murder so many type 5s i'm gonna ptsd about type 5s and strum tigers tomorrow or just maybe the rest of the time i play but yeah <coughs> in my defense i was unsupervised all right that's that's how that's what we're that's how we're gonna go with that one well not really much to say about the uh, Object 260, except for this tank. It holds up well in matchmaking. Really hard to compete against if you're versing someone who knows how to play it. And sure, my mark has dropped below the 85%. A lot of my tanks have dropped below their required marks because of when they reworked the mark system and everything else. And the fact that I'm not doing 5,000 damage a game and that some people are somehow. And I don't ever see them. So, other than that, you guys have a fantastic day, night, afternoon, whatever time it is for you. Um, if you liked the video, leave a like, comment, subscribe. If you dislike the video, well, there's a dislike button that you can, you know, pound the crap of, pound the crap out of it. Yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna take this. And we're just gonna go really really slow on stopping everything as I just click a button. And look away as I monologue for the next five and a half minutes, because that's what I do. But yeah, you guys, thank you for, you know, supporting me the past year and helping me out with my pastime, which literally I get to do like once a month. So or once every single two weeks, it feels like anymore. But other than that, thank you. You guys are awesome. I'll catch you next time. See you on the battlefield.